This might be the heaviest battery I've ever had, but it's the largest battery I've ever had too. This is an Epoch lithium iron phosphate, 460 amp hour battery, 460 amp hours. It's got a Victron system built into it for uh, monitoring and managing the BMS. And it's got these canvas ports on the side of it. The canvas, C-A-N-B-U-S, is a controller area network bus. It's a port on the EPAC batteries that is used for communication between a battery management system, the BMS, and external devices like inverters, chargers, or monitoring systems. It allows the battery to transmit data such as the state of charge, SOC, voltage, current, temperature, and other critical parameters in real time facilitating, in real time, facilitating better integration with compatible systems, particularly like Victron, which often use CAN bus communications. In summary, Victron components work well with Epoch batteries to provide efficient power conversion, detailed monitoring, smart management, and more safe operations. This is the system that's going to go in the back of my truck. We're going to install this today. This has kind of been a long time coming. I've been working on this for about, I don't know, month and a half, maybe two months, something like that. But I got delayed a bunch because of travel out of town and also because of weather. If it's out here and it's 30 degrees, I don't feel like working on it. And if it's out here and it's raining, I can't work on it. But this is where the Epoch 460 amp hour battery is going. It's going in here. This box here is a box made by Duha. Now Duha, while they're not real popular, I've been using this box for a while. I was using it with a 300 amp hour battery, which is right there. <laughs> it's buried right now. But they make, Duha makes boxes that they called hump store boxes, and they go over the hump. They mount to the rail, to the side rail of the truck, and they go over the hump of the wheel well hump. And then they sit there, and you can access them from the outside, come around here and open the lid, that kind of thing. But those boxes were not the correct dimensions for the battery I had. That's what I wanted. I wanted to use that. So they were up and out of the way. This was before I install, installed the decked slide here. I've got this rack and the decked and a few other things, this ISCO, I've got videos about that on my Unplugged channel. But today we're talking about the battery system that's going to run all of the things in the back of the truck and it's going to enable me to have a completely mobile off-grid communications vehicle. So this is, going through real quick here, this is a Red Arc DC to DC controller. This connects to, it runs one positive lead to my starter battery in the truck my main battery in the truck and then it comes back here and it connects to several different places and it will charge my secondary battery that's going to go in here when the truck is running it also has a uh, 40 amp it's a 40 amp charger it also has a built-in MP mppt solar charge controller so i can charge this charge my battery through this via solar or via the, just the engine running in the truck this is the victron lynx shunt which operates as a, a shunt. This is basically where the secondary battery gets connected to right here. And this is the Lynx distributor, which acts as a bus bar, both the positive and negative bus bar for the system. So let me take these cases. And, and of course, I have my Rig Runner 4005 right there as well. Now this will run, so my ISCO fridge will plug in here, and then this one comes to an external port here. One of these is the solar input, and one of these is the is just an extra port that I can plug in something external if I want to. I chose these SAE connectors because they are waterproof, and they have this cover over them. So that's what that's for. And then uh, this is the power coming in from the Lynx distributor to the rig runner. And let's take the, the covers off of here, and I'll show you guys what this looks like. This is the shunt and the distributor with the removable covers taken off. These just unbolt. There's a Phillips head screw on either end. Just unbolt and lift off really cleanly, really easily. This is a 200 amp fuse that connects the external battery to the rest of the system over here. So there's a 200 amp fuse there. And then these are individually fused. This, and I believe these are 50 amp fuses is what these are here. So we've got four fused circuits 50 times 4 is 200. That's why this is a 200 here. Now this is a 460 amp system. And the rig runner itself has 40 amp fuses in it. So there's, there's multiple fuses running through the system. I'm not really worried about it much happening to it. And there's no way I'm going to be pulling 200 amps through this all at one time, even if everything was running. Because these 50 amp fuses are not going to... Victron fuses, you can get them in, I think, 
30, 40, 50, 100, 200 amps. You can get them in all kinds of sizes there. They might come as low as 25 amps. I don't remember. But, you know, if I'm keyed down on HF for an extended period of time, maybe with FT8 or something, I might be pulling 20, 25 or 30 amps. So I need something that is at least that big. And, of course, you could put these different sizes if you want to. But this is the line coming off the rig runner, powering the rig runner. Going in here, you've got a positive line there. And this uh, is fused to the positive bus bar that is runs to the shunt and to the external battery underneath this which i'm not gonna pull that one up but i'll pull this one up here underneath this is where the negative bus bar connects to so you've got your positive bus bar and your negative bus bar on the bottom this goes over the top of it which is what this part is right here and your uh, positive connection goes here i don't have anything in this spot because i only have three connections right now so this is the rig runner this is going to be the rig runner, the second rig runner that I have mounted behind the seat in my truck, which runs on my radios. And this right here is the um, the Red Arc DC to DC charger. So I've got all of these running through the Lynx distributor, and they will be read by the Lynx shunt, so I'll be able to monitor everything coming into and going out of the battery. And if I want to, you see how these, these come as two separate pieces, and you take the bolts off, and you connect them right there. You can connect a second one of these right here, and it would be that much longer. In fact, you can connect these kind of indefinitely. These uh, Lynx distributors have ports on the on both sides to connect to one another, so you can daisy chain them, you know, for as long as a lo long as you want, as much room as you have. And probably what I what I might do in the future is expand this. I wasn't able to find an actual box. That was. This is the best box I could find. Now this box works fine, but it's obviously limited in space, and you'll see that when the video when I when I get everything installed. But I wouldn't mind finding a box that's maybe a little bit taller or something like that with a little bit more room, so I could eventually add a second Lynx distributor and put a few more things on it. But for now, this is going to be enough. It's going to run everything we've got. It's going to run my entire rig runner in the truck, and it's going to retire. Uh, it's going to run everything in the back which is the uh, which is the ice co fridge and the starlink and several other things so let's put all this together the first part of that video was about three months ago it was towards the end of december part one of the video was about a month before that in november part two of the video that you saw where i went through the victron stuff was in late december in January, I put everything together that you saw there, and I let it run for about, I don't know, a couple of weeks on this battery. Now, this battery worked fine. Obviously, it's a 100 amp hour. It is not going to last as long as the other one, but I wanted to put it together because that 460 is so heavy. I didn't want to put it all together and then drive it around for a while and, and be like something, I didn't hook up something right or something's not working correctly and have to plug that sucker out of there again. I'll show you how I mounted it in there. But I ran it on that, and that battery would last almost two days running my entire system. Now, when the truck is idle, like it is now, it's not beaconing APRS. Uh, there is a radio on in there on receive, but I'm not transmitting, obviously. And the temperatures outside over the last two or three months have been fairly cool to cold. We had a couple of 15-degree days in February. So the fridge doesn't work that. The fridge is plugged up 24-7. But the fridge isn't working that hard because the ambient temperature outside is not that high. So that battery would last it for about two days. But about a week before Orlando Hemcation of 2024, uh, which was uh, not quite a month ago at the time of this recording, the time of this last piece right here, I put in my 460 amp hour battery. And let me tell you guys something. I can't kill this thing. I, I can't kill it. I will drive the truck... And it's at 100% because that red arc thing keeps it topped off, uh, topped off pretty well. So that red arc piece keeps it topped off pretty well while it's running. And again, it hadn't really gotten hot yet. And I'm going to be interested to see how it performs this coming summer when it's, you know, 95, 100, 105 degrees outside in Texas. And the refrigerator is, going, is having to run a little bit more often than it is running right now. I've got this in here as, as, a, as kind of like a brace to keep keep it from falling over just this is this is temporary this is not 100 percent done yet but it's it's done it's been i've been running it like this for about a month you see that i put some l brackets in here to keep the battery from sliding back or sliding this way there's another one down there so that's the whole thing that's the 460 amp hour 
And every time I parked the truck, I parked the truck for, uh, let's see, I arrived in Orlando on Wednesday. We went to Poda on Thursday, and I parked the truck Thursday night, and I don't think I moved the truck until Sunday. I might have moved it, I might have started it and kind of parked it somewhere else, but I don't think I left the park all day Friday, Saturday, until Sunday. So I let it sit for about four days. We got back on Thursday afternoon. Thursday to Friday, Friday to Saturday, Saturday to Sunday. So about three days. Like, like three days. And the battery was like above, it was like 81 or 82%. And of course, as soon as I start the truck up and start driving home, it charges back up 40 amps per hour. You know, it'll charge the entire battery in about 10 hours, about, about 11 hours. A uh, little bit less than 12 hours. I said, if I could do math, I would have said 12 hours. A uh, little bit less than 12 hours. 40 amps an hour times 12 is 480. Um, so, and it's a 460 amp hour battery. But I've had this running since, uh, again, that was almost not quite a month ago. I've had this running since then. I don't drive my truck every day. I work from home making videos. That's what I do. You guys know that. And so I'll come out here to the truck after it's been sitting for a couple of days and the battery's at like 95%. Okay, I had the truck in the shop before I drove it to Ohio to pick up my new travel trailer uh, last week. And the truck was in the shop. Uh, they were replacing the fuel pump. It sat there for two days before they ever looked at it. They pulled it into the bay, took the gas tank out, replaced the fuel pump, put it back in, drove it up. They drove it up the road and, down, and back again. They drove it like maybe five, maybe four or five miles. So it wasn't running that long. And uh, and I come back to pick it up like three days later and the battery's at like 92%. So, <laughs> so it charged up a little bit while it was running. But I mean, like the fridge ran for like four days without the truck started at all. And again, it's not that hot outside. So further testing this season, we'll see. But my God, this battery is freaking rad. It is freaking awesome. I tried to do a capacity test on the West Mountain Radio software, and for whatever reason, the way the battery is built, uh, one of the guys at Epoch explained it to me. It was kind of over my head, but just the way the battery is built, it just the West Mountain Radio software won't read it correctly. So I can't get a real capacity test on it. But let me tell you something. Working real world, actual hands-on, and doing the thing, it's awesome. I just, I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna show you what the app looks like. Now, the next part of this build. So everything that's in the box now is the battery and all of the Victron stuff I showed you before. Apparently Victron doesn't put Bluetooth in some of their devices. I thought, I thought Victron all had Bluetooth devices or at least that Link Shunt, I thought it had Bluetooth. Apparently the Link Shunt I got, is like 300 bucks. They make a Bluetooth version, it's like 1100 bucks. So I, didn't go that route but there is a thing called a Serbo GX that they make that I picked up recently I'm gonna add it to the system not only does it have Bluetooth it also has an internet connection and as you guys know my truck has Wi-Fi full-time Wi-Fi in fact I'm about to put Starlink in the truck I've just been waiting on to get a new mount for Starlink to put it in the truck but so anyway either way it has a uh, full-time internet in the truck and the Serbo GX will not only connect via Bluetooth, so I'll be able to monitor it a little bit better, but it will it will upload to the to the Victron Cloud. So I'll be able to log in to the Victron Cloud and look at my truck from anywhere where I have an internet connection. So this is what the app for Epoch. This is the Epoch app, not the Victron app. I'm going to be running the Victron app soon. I might take uh, the Serbo GX has a monitor you can add to it. That's HDMI. I might put that there and let it run full time. I don't know yet. Maybe, maybe not here. But here's the Epoch app. I don't like, the one thing I don't like about this app, it does not turn uh, horizontal. It stays vertical. I emailed the guys at Epoch about this. I'm like, guys, can you update your app so that it, you know, you can look at it on a, on a tablet that's not vertical? Because I keep my tablet right here in horizontal fashion. But you can see right there, the battery's at 99%, 13 point, I'll turn the camera. How's that? So you guys can see that better. 13.3 <laughs> 3 volts. 0.0 uh, .0 amps are being drawn from it right now, which means the refrigerator is not running and the engine's not running, which obviously the engine's not running. And it's at 447 out of 460 amps. And that's, that's how I've been monitoring it since I don't have my Victron Bluetooth set up yet. But that is the next step.
And like I said, I just, I can't seem to kill this battery. So special shout out to Epoch Batteries. I had them on a live stream a couple of months ago. They make a fantastic product. I've got one of, this is a 460 amp hour. Like I said, I've got one of their 300 amp hour batteries. I've done a little bit of, of testing on that. We're gonna finish that up soon. Awesome, awesome. Very rough, very durable, very outdoors, rough country batteries. And uh, we're going to see how it lasts the summer in Texas. My last battery lasted the summer in Texas is fine. In fact, you know what? Something I forgot. During the, one of those 15 degree days, I woke up in the morning, it's 15 degrees outside, a couple, like during the middle of February, shortly after Hamcation, I came out to the truck and I started my truck. My truck doesn't like to run when it's, when it's cold any more than I like to run when it's cold. And the truck started just fine. And I turn on this app. And the batteries at like, I don't know, maybe 94, 95%, something like that. And I look at the monitor and there's zero amps coming into the battery. So it has low temperature cutoff, low temperature charging cutoff. So when the battery is cold, it wouldn't allow the, the Red Arc charger to charge it to save from, because it's 15 degrees outside. Well, it's 15 degrees outside. I don't know what the temperature of the battery was, but uh, it, it does say a temperature on this app here but I don't remember what it was so low temperature cutoff on top of all that so thank you to epoch batteries for sending this to me I really enjoy this battery will we will make some more videos with it later I will put any coupon codes that they have in the description of this video below you guys go check them out if you want just a very durable long lasting just excellent excellent quality battery go check them out link in the description below 73 and thanks for watching guys